guys just okay. all step in here. Step into the office. Step into the office. Grab a step telephone. Into the office. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you. Step Whoa. into the office. The office. That post looked too bad. That metal hammer one. Wow, I've never seen that. Style. Fucking Astro? better than the other one. What do we? Do you have an ashtray? Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I found it. Kleenex? It's usually not this Even place. people like us get cold once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you guys anything? Drink? Yeah, do you have any tea? Tea? Yeah. Sure. It's good for the day after. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Morning yeah. after. Tell them that yet. Their phones are starting already. Can I get you guys anything? Uh, yeah. Not quite yet. Soon, though. Soon? Beer? This beer is still hanging. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Styling hat. Dig it. Do, 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 do. The rat's in the center. Oh, my God. All right. Dad shit. <laughs> <laughs> Butthole surfers. Check that out. Is coffee right okay? <laughs> What? Coffee okay? Yeah. Uh, no, just get me, get me a beer. Okay. Yeah. From one extreme to the other, eh? Yeah. Start this thing. Now I'm gonna be taking their reports and then I'm gonna forward it to one of you guys. Okay? <laughs> so what exactly goes down here? In the well, right now all the college and commercial stations that have heavy metal shows are gonna be calling in their playlists hey, to me. Mark. I'm gonna take them and then shoot them over to you guys. Shoot them over. <laughs> okay? So you're all mad with a beer or maybe and a phone, so let's do it. So wake up. One, two, three, wake up. <laughs> so today, we have to wake up yeah. now. Hi, how you doing? Yours? <laughs> okay. Medium rare. PSC. Go ahead. Mm hmm. I feel like I'm saying. Mm hmm. I feel like I'm trying four at once. Mm-hmm. 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 Scraping. Mm -hmm. Wait, this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's high energy stuff. Mm -hmm. It's too hot on it. Wait, what can it's you too hot right here. So it's yeah. got to be silent. Okay, Better? <laughs> 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 we don't want to talk to Metallica. <laughs> There's no intercom thing where we can all like, yell at once. <laughs> How does it work? <laughs> the phone's not working. <laughs> Hold on. It's not going. Metalla who? Oh, yeah. Hung up on it. <laughs> oh, see ya. <it. laughs> got scared. Cool. Where's the that was Metallica hanging Hi. up on you. <laughs> Good. How you doing? Okay. Hey, guys. Who? Hey, team. Yell, yeah, yay! Yeah. 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 Okay, two? Metallica. Uh -huh. Three Metallica. Four Metallica. <laughs> what was the other thing? Uh-huh. Who? Uh-huh. 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 Pardon? Pardon? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I really mm -hmm. like uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Hopefully I won't hang up on you. Here's Kurt. <laughs> Okay, let's try this. If I hang up on you, try again. Let's see. Sure. Your phone's you, ringing, you're on. <laughs> Hello, this is James. You're the lucky contestant. Oh, uh, all right, man. CMJ. Mang. Hey, Mang. What's happening? All right, Mang. <laughs> Tour's going real good. New Haven? Yeah, that went all right. Yeah, things are going real good, though. Yeah, getting treated real well. 55 minutes, you know, get our stage set up and everything. Things are cool. Three times, huh? Cool. Oh, the, the Wasp tour? <laughs> Hello. Well, we got till late May. Early hey, June, how's it going? It's Kirk. In the States. Then he goes right. to Japan for like two weeks. Then we do some headline stuff. This is Kirk. I'm not too sure where. Yeah, Kirk who? Um, hey, how's it going? Then we hook up back, uh, when he comes back and go till August. 
Uh, this guy wants an interview. <laughs> yeah, sure. Too sure where the, head, or the headline stuff's taking us. Uh, no, I don't know where this place is. No, <laughs> I just know that we're somewhere in Long Island. Uh, it's a bus parked outside. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll eventually we'll make it there. Yeah. Midwest, yeah, I'm not Texas, sure exactly starts in that. Tulsa, yeah, sure we'll Tulsa, Oklahoma, <laughs> the Kane's Ballroom again. Uh, Metallica really returns like home to Tulsa. Oh, we hey. just played there. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the show. Oh, well. oh man, bad scene, dude. All right. I couldn't get a ticket, Well, yeah. Maybe next time. Same here, man. Could have come to the bus. Thanks a lot. Oh, really? Cool. Later. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Baltimore's yep. a friendly town. Okay. Uh -huh. Bummer. Oh, no. <laughs> Bad business choice. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Evate. <laughs> Hair of the gusset. Johnson's Deli. <laughs> Hello? Yeah? I'm alright, trying to wake up. How you doing? This is Lars. Lars. Ooh. I'm all right. Just woke up a bit Whatever. ago, and uh, we're trying to like focus on things around yeah. us now. <laughs> Where are you calling from? Fredonia? Upstate Burma. or something? Cool. So we're down at the show. <laughs> Doing metallic on the radio. Cool. Roaring. Saw things out there. Too bad you don't have a big intercom. Yeah, it's yeah. Styling. Good to hear. Seems to be that way in a lot of these college stations. Good good buzz going, good excitement. Cool. Excitement on the street. Ha ha. We'll talk at once, that'd be cool. <laughs> well, Aussie's flipping off to Japan like the last couple of weeks of May and the first couple of weeks of June and we'll be doing like three weeks of headline stuff then through like Midwest and Texas and stuff and um then he comes back from Japan and we rejoin the tours, I think June 10th in San Diego. So we'll be doing like three weeks of headline stuff, at least this side of Europe. Then we go to Europe in September and headline Europe eight weeks through the fall. And then if like the album keeps doing as well as it's doing right now and so forth, then there's a chance we might do some like headline stuff in the States after we've done Japan in November and December. So fear not, <laughs> we shall return one day. <laughs> No, it really looks like, I mean, if things keep going the way they're going at the moment, <laughs> we might come back and do, you know, a couple of months of headline stuff like in January, which would be great. But at the moment, things are not confirmed that far ahead, you know. It's great. I mean, we're getting treated hella good, you know. 55 minutes every night, they're letting us have, like, our own, like, stage set up and stuff like that. Because like, it's like, yeah. I think they realize that the better sort of we go out and kick the crowd in the face, you know, the better they'll go down when they come out, you know. So it just sort of works real well, because I think like we're probably like the most extreme of the sort of up and coming bands, you know, and he is like definitely the most extreme of the like big time arena bands, you know. So it seems to work <laughs> quite well together. <laughs> it's cool. Things are going, moving and grooving. Actually, <laughs> ran into him the other day in New York. He came down to the show at the Meadowlands and was hanging out. He was being pretty cool. He seems to sort of, um, how should I say it, be a bit more mellow <laughs> than he used to be, you know? And he's like, apparently the word is that his new album, his second album, is, is going to be real good. They finished it and he was out here in New York doing some press stuff with some of the other guys from the band. It was cool, just he was hanging out, we like, you know, didn't have too much time to hang out together because he had to like leave the next morning or whatever, but he was being real cool. Oh, it's cool. Eureka. No problems with him. I think the new album hmm. should be out. So how's things up there? Yeah, how'd you like it? And the word is that it's yeah? really good. Why right on? We had a lot of fun. Cause what, you played quite a bit of Megadeth too? Actually, we always cool. have a lot of fun. Cool! Too? Yeah. yeah. I, I just yeah. think it's Great. cool that I mean that he's trying to do something different than what, you know, he did with Metallica, you know, instead of like, it would have been so easy for him just to come to the nice shop. 
so the whole thing that he did with his arm came down. Everything's uh, growing <laughs> smooth. Yeah, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. Oh, yeah. Ozzy Tour. Did the hair of the dog, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're doing uh, Nassau Coliseum yeah, tonight. Exactly. Rasmus. He's Danish, just like I am. <laughs> Very Danish, yeah. He's the um, house engineer at the studio that we've uh, done the last two albums, you know, Sweet Silence. And I mean, the reason it's really sort of good when it com comes to like turning knobs and, you know, EQ and shit and getting, you know, the best sounds out of us that we can produce. And so he's just really great to work with, you know. That's cool. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, but at the same time, it still sort of got that bite to it, you know? <laughs> it just ran on down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though this time it took six months to make. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Part no, it's just it's great working with him, you know? We're going to be doing Knows us uh, quite uh, well after, after two hours, you know? Probably. Yeah, after we cool. come get back from Europe, we're going to go out. Yeah, he was really we'll great to work we'll with. Probably be out on a headlining tour afterwards. No, we're gonna be <laughs> doing a bunch of headlining dates. No, I mean the reason he's great to work with Michael is that he's like really, really easy to get along with, you know. And um, since. On this album, he was not really involved in the production side of things, right? He was like, it was even yeah, easier for us so. to get along with him because it was not like he was yeah, like, you know, just, always had a counterpoint to what we were saying. He was being very, very, you know, just lenient and easy to work with. Yeah, and um, it was just like, I mean, he came up with, you know, intelligent suggestions and things like that, but he wasn't like, he didn't say, well, this is how it has to be, you know, period, you know, because. I mean, it was like we were the producer, so it was our ass on the line if something didn't go right, you know. So it was great to work with me and James were down there for about three weeks mixing. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they're correct, sometimes they're not. It's cool. Yeah. Good case of being correct. Oh well. Yeah. Next time, you know, come down to the show. Um. Well. We're all right, man. Right good now, talking to you. Know about that. Take care. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right now, as we speak, ah! <laughs> as we speak, me and you. Yeah. Okay. Uh. You want some of me? Yeah, you're gonna be nice. Or, you know, a couple nights a week. Actually. What? <laughs> I wish we could. Okay. Well. The lighter side. Ooh. There. I, ju I just wave. What? Well, you know, I don't really mean that. Uh, either, sure. Yeah, we got a lot of. I don't mind. Off, you know, it's a bit more than we're used to. WP. Well, so all this know. stuff is to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. The lyrics, basically, you know, topics that. Okay, uh, man. Good talking to you. Are dealing, uh, in, uh, you know, <laughs> social kind of. Things that are, you know, going on in the news and, you know, things that are affecting us as well as other people and I'm just, you know, not really well, I mean, trying to put my views I mean, anything onto less anyone, about I'm just saying what I kind of feel. I'm being affected on that, as much, on that crap. As much spontaneity into it as we can, you know. It's really good. Sort of things go are going really good. Happens, getting treated though. pretty well. Get 55 minutes, you know, put up the whole stage set I mean, and everything. Have a production and as big as crowd response, not bad, you know. You have to sort of do You know, a lot of times things, right. well, people, you know, really don't know what to expect, you know. Is, uh, uh, we're playing you know, some of the faster stuff and we're trying to, you know, get some of the slower stuff in there too, kind of, you know, get people hooked on the shit. But, uh, you know, after a show, you know, we have time for an encore and uh, you don't really hear any yeah, yeah, or any boo. You know, it's kind of, uh, you know, like, what was that? You know, did you like it? I don't know. Did you like it? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. But at least they're they're hearing the stuff. A lot of stage space, I think. Yeah, it's great. You know, we're playing a lot of places that we wouldn't be able to. You know, in front of a lot of fans that wouldn't come to see us if we were headlining either. No, we used to get that stuff in about seventy-five. Yeah, that's true. I like playing. I love playing the small places. Some of the gates where there's like just not enough yeah, time to get up, which is cool with like a Marshall setup. We are actually carrying like our own full yeah. stage set, which like consists of. Oh, the small places are great. You get down in the kids, you know, like grab them by the face. Like the real heavy union kids. Yeah. We don't, we don't think we've got well, um, Aussie flipped off to Japan, uh, I think on May 20th suits? for three weeks. Yeah. 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 Bootsy, 
Quoi Good to hear. No, it's just we did uh, some of the best shows we did sort of back in the early days when Cleveland. We did a show at the Agora, the now uh, now long gone Agora. Hello. This is Kirk Hammett. Uh, my friendly restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right. WK. Okay. Hello. This is K Kirk what? from Metallica, and you're listening to the KSR Who? Arizona yeah. State University this new one. music and killer <laughs> metal source. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Lights out. Cool. I'm so right. tired of all these heavy metal from yeah. hell and all this bullshit. This is Kurt from Metallica and you're listening to I mean, every time people ask me to do ID's, we're State like, you listen to heavy metal from hell. I just tell them so <laughs> um, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I hate all that okay. stupid A -S -S satanic <laughs> shit. I'm sorry, I'm like, a bit too all right, WKSR. We have some fun, man. Right. Hello, this is Lars Ulrich <laughs> of Metallica. Okay. And you listen to Strange Steve Take four. on WKSR on the lights. I Hello, this is Kirk from Metallica. <laughs> and you're listening to KASR ASU. New oh, music and cool killer and metal source. Ha! You've only got, you know, 55 minutes, which is quite a bit. Good, yeah. it's going act, great. But, you know, you got to try and you know, mix the three albums together. Pardon? And plus promote the Yeah, we're, we're playing Nassau Coliseum. So, you know, we're seeking sure, destroyers, you know, pretty much. The, so, like, next time we get to Cleveland, we already played the metal in this. It was, yeah, you know, well, I mean, it kind of. You know that crowd, that's a great you know, show. Kind of like that. That song you can always count on New York. Like, you know, like, you know, like that. Good response. You don't want to. They're like maniacs out here. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Let's no, read this. Yeah. Well, we're doing some headline stuff after when Ozzy no, goes to isn't. Japan, which is uh, early June. Yeah. So we got two weeks well, of headline uh, stuff. Well, wait, is we're Bobby doing that around here? Texas area. Bobby. Bobby, our tour manager, can Some you get him for a second? Someone uh, wants to talk well, to him. We're going to be down around <laughs> that area. Uh, hey. All right, who's this? Oh, yeah? Um, Where's that? <laughs> Manhattan. All right. Coming down tonight? <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, uh, you know, those things happen. Dig it. <laughs> All right, thank you. We do our best. I'm going to put you on with Lars. Um, since we are recording and your two levels are different, try to just let him finish talking before you start so that you're not stepping on each other. Okay, hold on. Hello. Hi, how are you, Lars? I'm all right. Just waking up down here in Long Island. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it's still very early, <laughs> especially on, on this kind of schedule that we're on at the moment, you know? Uh-huh. How you doing? Oh, very good, very good. Last night on uh, Fingers Metal Shop, we had a, uh, a special uh, half-hour segment of the show dedicated Ooh. to uh, Metallica and Ozzy. Yeah? And uh, I'm telling you, there's a lot of hype going on out here tonight's show. Where are you calling from? I'm uh, calling from Babylon. Babylon? Yes. Uh, that sounds like far away. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, it sounds like it, but it's, uh, it's right in the heart of Long Island. Uh, so it's just around the corner, huh? Mm -hmm. It's the home of uh, WBAB, which is uh, the number one rock station on uh, the Long Island circuit. And uh, you're getting a lot of good support from uh, BAB as well as uh, the rest of the nation. Last time I looked, I believe you were number uh, 30 on the... Yeah, with a bullet. Unfortunately, next, next week we lose the bullet, but... Stay in the same place, well, it's been a long, which is good. A long, uh, long ride from uh, from the first demo tape to now. It must feel uh, feel good to be up there now, huh? Yeah, although it's like I mean, it's still the same basic principles within this band. You know, it's just on a bit higher level, you know. But I mean, still the same four idiots, you know, <laughs> trying to stay in tune and stay on time. <laughs> I think that's the best thing about the Metallica is the the. Uh, the image and the, the attitude of the band has never changed and been uh, hindered with the, with the success. Uh, would that be a correct statement? I think that's fairly correct, yeah. I mean, I look at it as, you know, some of the bands that we know and have toured with in the past order, it's like, it's like four sort of businessmen surrounded around that one uh, object of sort of just making money before they're like 
you know, so old that they can't stand up anymore. But with this band, it's just, you know, a bunch of kids like just sort of having a good time doing what we want, playing the sort of songs that we want to play and just sort of having an occasional drink and whatever not. <laughs> and it's just like, I mean, the basic principles are like the same as they were, you know, five years ago when we were starting out in the garage, just like on a bit higher level, like I said, you know. And it's cool because like we're so lucky with the situation that we're in at the moment with the management and the record company that we have, you know, they really keep, they make sure that no one interferes with what we're doing, you know. And it's just really good from the business side not to have any interference with people saying, well, you have to do this, that, and the other, you know, because that would just create, you know, a lot of problems <laughs> because, you know, we're not about to change for anyone. And they just know that, that I mean, to sort of keep whatever is in Metallica, they just try and keep that sort of there, you know, and, and they see from their point of view that it sells, you know, so they're smiling <laughs> just like we are most of the time. <laughs> that's good, that's good. What kind of an impact do you think your music uh I, I, on a personal level, uh, to be honest with you, when I first uh, started getting into this new type of heavy metal, uh, it took time to acquire a taste for it. Uh, <laughs> well, it's just a bit different than, I mean, I think that what we're doing at the moment is, you know, quite a bit different from um, what people have heard before, you know, and um, which I think is, you know, one of the main reasons, of course, that we're coming across so well, you know, and selling so many records. It's the kids have, like, there's never really been a band that played something you know, it sounded a bit different from the other bands, but at the same time, sort of was completely on the level with the kids, you know. As far as I can see, they're like two distinctly different ways that you can sort of come across, you know, to the kids out there. And I think that they just sort of look to us as being completely on the level, you know. We're just like them. We're just the people just playing the music or whatever. There's nothing wrong with having this sort of larger-than-life image or whatever, but we're just quite different from that, you know. I think a lot of the kids out there really sort of associate themselves well with what we're doing, you know, it's sort of like a street thing instead of us trying to sort of be, you know, larger than life characters that, you know, it's like a huge pretend thing, you know, we might as well be movie actors or something, you know. And it's like they just associate well with that way of coming across, you know, it's cool. Is this the, uh, is this the way you had pictured it, say, five, six years ago when Lars Ulrich <laughs> a band, uh, is this what you had pictured? I, I mean, I'm the kind of person, I don't really picture that many things, you know, I don't think that much ahead, which is like the whole thing with the whole band. I mean, we just sort of go about doing what we do on a sort of a day-to-day -day basis. We don't say, well, you know, next year we have to have sold so many albums and the album has to be platinum by this and this date, or we're failing, and, you know, the next album, you know, I mean, we don't think ahead that much. We just sort of, it's funny because, like, mostly, like, when I do most of the press, it's like, I find myself sitting afterwards and analyzing what we did, you know, three months ago when we actually did it, you know, because like when we do it, we don't really think that much about what we're doing. It's like the old, you know, bullshit. It's just like a natural feeling type thing, you know, <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's really true when we like write the songs and go about doing what we do, it just sort of happens. And then it's like afterwards that I have to sit, you know, in interviews and think about why we did it, you know, and there's not really that much thought going into what we do, you know, so it's like, you know, six years ago, just like, it was just great to be, you know, playing in a band, playing some of the songs that I wanted to be playing to sort of, for me, the interesting thing was always that sort of band spirit and being in a band, you know, and sort of playing with other people and writing your own songs and all that. And it was just, you know, five years ago, great to be doing it on that level, you know, and now we're just doing it on a different level, but it's still, you know, the same basic principles, you know. What kind of an impact do you think your music is going to have on the future of heavy metal? Well, I think that... I mean, we're showing quite a bunch of people definitely in the business that, I mean, it is actually possible <laughs> to do this without airplay, without videos, without um, sort of having a huge image or whatever. It's just possible to go out and play the sort of music that you want to play and do your own thing and just sort of come across on a completely on the level way, you know. And I think that maybe some of the people in some of the high-rise offices have sort of not realized that there actually was as many people out there for a band like us that there actually is, you know. And um, that might be one of the things that we're showing someone, but just basically doing what we want. <laughs> and like I said before, it's just great being in a business situation where we have that opportunity, you know. Yeah, you have full reign available for each project that you... Uh... Yeah, it's like, we, you know, no one gets involved with anything in terms of, you know, songwriting or recording or production or anything like that, you know. And I think maybe... Um, I mean, especially working with Elektra because they're such a open-minded company in that sense, you know. I think it's showing a lot of other companies in a way that sort of 
you know, it, it is actually possible to lead the artist, you know, to just do what he wants, you know, if they have enough confidence in them, you know. We're just very happy because the lecture here <laughs> on the wall <laughs> are very, very sort of confident in what we're doing and just being great to work with, you know. That should earn me a free dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Good plug, yeah. I noticed that, uh... <laughs> Metallica writes about like real things. Real things, yes, it's a real world, so we write about real things. With this latest album, Master of Puppets, which I must <laughs> comment that it, it is the most outstanding album, and I've said it on the air, that this is the album of the year. Big words, thank you. And uh, what I want to know is, is, is this a, a political stance uh, as far as where Metallica stands, maybe on their, their thoughts about, uh, specifically you know, like in Disposable Heroes and, and the album cover? Uh, what's, what's Metallica trying to say? Well, I mean, like I said before, there's not really, we're not trying to take advantage of the situation that we're in at the moment where a lot of people obviously listen to what we're doing. You know, it's very easy to sit down and write about, you know, chasing girls down the freeway in your Camaro or whatever, but it's just kind of boring and predictable and overdone, you know. It's just more interesting from our point of view to write about some more real things, but at the same time, you know, I'm very careful not to sort of use the position that we're in at the moment to sort of make any big statements or whatever. We're just questioning a few things, you know, and um, sort of writing about some of the shit around us that interests us instead of... Let me uh, ask you, with the, the, the songs on the album, uh, none of them being under five minutes, <laughs> obviously you, uh, you had no care in the world if uh, radio picked up on this or not. Uh, would that be a correct statement? Very correct. <laughs> Uh, and, and obviously, uh, you're doing well uh, with sales um, and in the concerts, too. How's the Aussie uh, tour? It's going great, really great. I mean, they're being really, really great to tour with because, like, they're giving us 55 minutes and um, we have, like, they're giving us, like, the opportunity to use our own, like, specially made stage set. And um, it's like, I think they realize, the whole organization, that if we go out and give the audience a good kick, you know, then and get him like really fired up and get him energetic, you know, that when Aussie comes out, he's, you know, the audience are going to be even more receptive to what he's doing, you know. So it sort of works both ways. And I think Aussie's reached the point now where he's, you know, so big and so also confident in what he's doing that there's no need to give, you know, support acts like us a hard time, you know, because like I said, the harder we go out and get the audience sort of energized and sort of ready for sort of the big man himself, you know, the better he's going to go down. Here we go. So Metallica's been out on tour, but this is the first major tour. How's it going? It's going great. We're getting treated wonderfully. We get to put our full set up every night. Our show is almost an hour long, which is very unusual for an opening act to have. And uh, we're just getting treated great. We get as many passes, tickets, things like that, things that are usually trouble when you're a support band, usually get treated a little less, but since we're selling some of the tickets on this and we're a major influence over the crowd, we're really getting treated very well. So you're getting along well with Ozzy and his band? Yes, and yes. It's, it's like, it's more of a family thing. It's not really the opening act and Ozzy's people. Everybody works together, which makes it very harmonious. And we've, we've worked very hard to try to make this happen as well. Try not to rock. Oh, okay. I did part of their tour last year when they were headlining theaters for about six months. How's this different? Well, this is different because now all of a sudden the smallest crowd they're playing to is 4,000 to 5,000 kids in, a, in an arena where it's not sold out and the largest is 20,000. So it's a big difference. I mean, they're 10 feet away from the crowd instead of being right next to them. The difference between playing clubs and arenas. And the whole vibe is different. It's harder for them to get used to it because if it was up to them, they'd play in the clubs and the smaller places where they have the intimacy with the audience. How are they here? You've probably seen it because you're in the business. Sometimes on a young band, when all of a sudden you get successful and you're playing a huge crowd, it's hard to handle just among the inside the dynamics of the band. How are they handling it? Well, they're getting more used to it because they, they feel the energy coming back from the kids. I mean, when you got 10,000 kids out there screaming and holding Metallica banners and the rest of that, it's really pretty hard to ignore it and not enjoy it. So they're getting used to it. They're, they're, getting, they get, they're getting more used to the feel more than anything. What do they do to let off steam? Because they're in this bus a lot. 
they're in the bus a lot, you know, they have a couple of drinks, they're, everything's pretty cool here. There's none of the rock star image in this band at all, which is very easy for me to deal with. Because it's no pampering, they're adults, they do things on their own. You know, they see their friends, they try to relax a little bit here and there, and, and party, you know, to a certain degree. So how old are these guys? I believe the oldest member is 23, and that's Cliff. And the average age is about 22. Lars is 21. Electra let them produce their record themselves. Right, right. They seem um, pretty serious about what they're doing. Right. Their serious attitude is that they don't become anything other than what they are. They just enjoy being themselves. They wear the same clothes on stage that they wear in the street. There's no costumes, there's no makeup, no wardrobe. It's a very real thing. They just want to go up there and play. And they want to see the kids get treated well. They sign autographs every night. They insist on signing autographs. And they insist on being in touch with the kids, which is why they'll come here to CMJ and answer the phones and talk to the people that play the records and talk to the kids. I mean, it's very important to them that they stay in touch with their fans. Now, what's, tell me what's on their schedule for today. Well, after we finish here, we'll go to Nassau Coliseum, which is where we're playing tonight. And they'll have a couple of hours to relax and have a bite to eat before they go on. And then after the show, they'll see whatever record company people or a radio station. Sometimes they do interviews after the show. And then we'll pack them up and we'll get them on the bus. They might sign some autographs and then they'll go to the hotel. And then the same thing, and then the same thing tomorrow. There's a lot of days off on this tour, which is very hard. Because a band like this is used to working six days a week. And when you start having three or four days off a week and you're only working two or three, it's hard to find things to do with your time. But I'll go shopping, spend some money. Right, some of that top 30 money. Great, thanks a lot. Okay. Call my hairdresser, <laughs> Roy. It's an emergency. The uh, Master of Puppets LP is number 30 on the billboard. How does that kind of success make you guys feel? Styling. Surprised. Friendly. <laughs> yeah, real surprised. Ooh. Shout the questions out, maybe? <laughs> How does it feel? Sorry about that. Sure. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to answer that again? The proper way? <laughs> <laughs> that, being in the top 30 is pretty surprising. It's great, though. Good place to be. Is that how you guys measure success? Album sales? Uh, if not, how so? crowd reactions yeah well you can measure it in quite a few different ways how many people show up at your show that's how we pretty much rate it I've talked to a lot of hardcore metal fans and they say quote Metallica have sold out what's your response to something like that I think you could do it on the TV here <laughs> yeah it's uh, we're not too worried about them we do what we want to do you know if they consider that selling out then uh, whatever there's a lot of people think you sold out just because you're on a major label and are very popular or maybe you don't play a thousand miles an hour the whole time or you know I mean we just we'd be doing the same thing if we were still on you know independent label I read a quote from Lars that said Metallica is going to be big but we're going to do it in our way can you uh, explain that well it's good that you know we have you know we're up on around 30 in the charts no well, hardly any radio play on the you know major stations. You know, a lot of college stations are you know helping out, but you know, no video, no you know mass you know media, and still you know there's a huge buzz going on, and I think it's because of our music. That's what's great. You know, we're doing it our way, and a lot of the major magazines are picking it up, and you know, not you know putting a bunch of hype, and you know, we're doing it our way. It's great. Does that still mean no videos? That's a matter of time, pretty much just a matter of time. Not a huge demand right now. What's it like being on tour with Ozzy? Real good. It's a lot of fun. Things are going real well. 55 minutes, you know, all our stage set up. You get treated cool. well. Yeah. Do you guys hang out with the guys from their band? Now and then, you know, it's 
night off, you know, go out to the local bar or whatever, but... Depends who's where, you know? I mean, you just kind of run into people here and there, more or less. How would you... What do you think about Ozzy and Metallica as a touring package? Good. Real good. Both doing real well. Um, I think kind of complement each other. It's a good bill. How'd the fans react to you guys? Great. They've been with us. Yeah. A lot better than, you know, other support acts would have, I think. <laughs> A lot of the smaller places, you know, in the middle of the country are, you know, still not too familiar with our stuff. And, you know, we have time for an encore. We'll go off stage for a bit and you, you won't hear a huge, yeah, come on, come on. And you won't hear no boo. You just kind of hear, bow, 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 what? you know, what's that? You know, did you like it? I don't know. Did you? <laughs> what was that? Kinda, you know, yeah. They don't know what to think in those places. In the bigger cities, do you think a lot of kids are coming out to see you? To think so. <laughs> it looks that way. That's from what down we front. hear. That's what we hear. Describe the relationship you guys have with your fans. Same, same people, same as our fans. We're not, you know, up there doing something that they couldn't really do. It's just a little harder to get to them now, you know, with the big arenas and the big security and stuff. It's not quite as intimate as it has been in the past, but I guess that's to be expected. Uh, small places are real fun. The atmosphere, you know, it's a lot more intense, crammed in, like concentrated. No barriers, you know. You can see pretty much everyone. You know, people right in some your people face. by the face. <laughs> yeah. These bigger places, you know, you get your barriers, and it's hard to see past, say, tenth row. <laughs> kind of hard to get a good vibe off the crowd. Why do you think it's important to be close to your fans? The energy flow. Yeah. You know. It, we get the energy directly from them, you know, and the farther away you are, the harder that is to uh, communicate. Really. Why would you want to separate yourself from them? <laughs> Tell us how long the tour is going to be going for. Well, we're with Ozzy in the States till late May. He does two weeks in Japan. We do some headline stuff around Texas and then hook up with him again when he comes back. Go on till I think August. And then Europe after that, a couple months. And then Japan, the end of the year. It'll be till next year. Yeah, we're actually. pretty much on the What's road. Up after that, any distant... Come back and do some headline stuff in the States, probably. Which would be fun. Playing 20,000 seat arenas exposes you guys, like we said, to a lot of kids who haven't seen Metallica before and don't know what Metallica is about. Do you think that's more important at this stage of your career than, say, headlining places like the Moors and New York? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. We're playing a lot of places that we wouldn't usually play if we're headlining because of, you know, tour budget. And in front of a lot of kids that wouldn't come to see us, you know, if we were headlining maybe. Just, you know, because... Chance Aussie. to make some more fans, you know? Yeah. People that, that just wouldn't Reach see Reach out it. and grab some more. What do your parents think about all this? <laughs> They're into it. Yeah, your parents are well into it. So is Kirk's. Lars is as well. Really My dad, it. you know, whatever. <laughs> you think they look at you a little differently when they see the album so high on the charts? Well, it, it makes them, and yeah, they're proud, and, and they're happy that there's some success going on, you know. It's a bit of a relief for them. You know, they'd be pretty worried about it years ago. But Do they come out and see your shows? If it's appropriate, you know, if the venue's right, you know. I don't bring them to any small riots that we have in Frisco, you know? <laughs> We've been known to play a few of those. And mom up front. Uh. <laughs> Why should a kid spend 10 bucks to see Metallica rather than another metal band? Uh, well, hopefully because he likes it. He wants to <laughs> see us. Well, because, you know, we... Something different to offer. Something more than, you know, basic thrash. Just 100% all the time. Got some varied stuff. I like to think it's interesting to see too. Yeah. What is that something different? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, some lyrics, I think. <laughs> lyrics that say something more than "Hey baby, let's party," yeah. you know, bang your head against each other and all that. Some music gets uh, it's pretty intricate now and then, which a lot of the. You know, thrashing bands 
are pretty straightforward in their approach, you know. What are your thoughts on looks bands? People like Rat, Crew, Kiss, people who rely on the effects and the costumes and everything. So what? It works for them. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't do it. But it works You'd for look them. pretty ugly in it. <laughs> yeah, we, we look ugly enough as it is. <laughs> You don't need any help. Leave well enough alone. So tell us your theory on that, just sticking with the jeans and sneakers. This is what we're comfortable in. That's what we wear when we're just hanging out doing nothing. And you know, why should we change? We're on stage. You know, we're not trying to be something big and fancy. You know, it's just us doing what we do. Let's like yeah. keep it that way. Bring the music more across instead of the look. Not try and hide anything. That also ties in with what you said about just being like the kids who come yeah. to see you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times we'll get hassled, you know, where's your pass? They think of some punter trying to get <laughs> back. <laughs> That's cool. I like hiding the pass so they hassle you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you think a lot more, I hate to use the term thrash bands, but hardcore speed metal bands, or bands who have their roots in that. Why haven't too many been signed? Why have you been signed in that band? Um, I don't know, I think we're pretty lucky. Yeah. Because Kill 'Em All really like, hit the underground really hard. And then a lot of bands started catching on after that. Yeah, I think we had a head start on a lot of yeah. them. Yeah. Well, we saw the new wave of British metal that was coming out. We knew it was going to hit, like, you know, a couple of years before. We knew it was going to hit the States fairly soon, so. You know, we liked doing it, and you know, we were doing it down in LA, and a lot of people didn't know what, you know, what the hell was going on. You know, they didn't see any hairdos or makeup or anything. Just going up there bashing it. Do you think speed metal has developed into like just another trendy musical genre now? Could be. I mean, in terms of like, you know, satanic images, where you have to have that, and you have to have studs and leather. Well, There's always your trendy stuff yeah. that's coming up, but I think we're gonna be hanging out for quite a while. Just, you know, Sabbath, you know, a lot of bands copied them for a while and then kind of dwindled away. What are your influences? What did you guys, like, grow up listening to? Old Sabbath, mm, Rush, Aerosmith, and Thin Lizzy. <coughs> a lot of Thin Lizzy. Great bands. editorial on Thin Lizzy. <laughs> Cliff, I read that you were into blues. Uh... <laughs> I'm into a lot of different kinds of music. That's uh, blues, reds, no, you know, not real. <laughs> <laughs> He's into yellow, blue, yeah, reds. That's not real accurate. You know, I'm into a lot of different stuff: classical music, punk, uh, beer, even you know some popular music. It's a bunch of things I like. Well, listen to different stuff for different moods, you know. Yeah, exactly. Who are the new artists or records that you guys are getting excited about now? What are you listening to? Usker Du. I like the new stuff. Band called English Dogs. Some of the minor, old underground bands that aren't so popular. Band called Sawin. And yeah. The old Misfit stuff too is real good. And, you know, a lot of the old stuff that we grew up on, we still listen to a lot. Yeah. We're not listening to you know some of the you know basic metal that's coming out. Kind of shy away from that. What do you think's in the future for heavy metal? It's, it's going to be hanging out for a while. It always has been hanging out. My well, last question, this is the toughie. Is it true Cliff Bernstein's the secret fifth member of the band? <laughs> See him out at the at the sound desk, you'll think so. He gets into it. He does. You ever gonna bring him out so he can play some air guitar with you? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. If he wants. <laughs>